Hills, where one of the phone manufacturers, this is Oppo Reno, uh, has released its new brand. And of course, uh, today, KTN's uh, in-house techie, Brian Giorgio Tieno, has all the action from the tech world. Over to you, Brian. The board of Twitter has agreed to a $44 billion takeover from the billionaire Elon Musk. Mr. Musk, who made the shock bid less than two weeks ago, said Twitter had tremendous potential that he would unlock. He also called for a series of changes, from relaxing its content restrictions to eradicating fake accounts. The firm initially rebuffed Mr. Musk's bid, but it would now ask shareholders to vote to approve the deal. Mr. Musk is the world's richest person, according to Forbes magazine, with an estimated net worth of 273.6 billion US dollars, mostly due to his shareholding in electric vehicle maker Tesla, which he runs. He also leads the aerospace firm SpaceX. Meta has today outlined some of the work it's been undertaking to promote election integrity for the Kenya elections on 9th August 2022. The work is inspired by Meta's experience so far in supporting over 200 elections globally, including key elections across the sub-Saharan Africa. Meta's dedicated teams have also been working closely with elections authorities and trusted partners in countries facing elections to customize its strategies and take appropriate steps to stay ahead of emerging threats and make sure it is prepared long before people cast their votes. So as Meta, we are really keen in making sure that we uh, uphold election integrity. And the way we are doing that is making sure that our spaces, uh, in terms of the platforms that we have, so Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger, uh, can be used by people to connect and express themselves um, and, and say their opinions about uh, as important as is the case, for example, in the case of elections, a civic engagement process like this generally tends to um, interest a lot of people and we want them to be able to come onto our platforms and share such information about their thoughts. But at the same time, we don't want them to do this at, at the uh, expense of safety of others. And so we are constantly looking at how we can uphold um, and balance between allowing for free expression uh, but also at the same time safety. And so a lot of the work we're doing at Meta presently is to make sure that we are investing heavily in internally building our capacity um, in terms of having a very huge safety and security team. So for example, in the last year alone, we've spent over $5 billion uh, in just growing the teams that are looking at safety and security at Meta. Um, and this has, is a team that has grown to over 40,000 people and it's literally quadrupled um, in the last uh, six years. HBO and its HBO Max streaming service ended March with 76.8 million global subscribers, an increase of 3 million subscribers after hitting 73.8 million subscribers as of the end of 2021. Telcom giant AT&T disclosed the user gains, which marked a contrast of Netflix subscriber loss in the first quarter that led Wall Street analysts to release their stance on the stock and also dragged down rivals on Wednesday in reporting its first quarter financials Thursday, its first earnings update since spinning off entertainment unit Warner Media earlier this month to merge it with Discovery. Spotify's latest earning releases suggest that the audio streaming service subscriber numbers haven't seen much, if any, impact from the controversies that surrounded its Joe Rogan podcast just a few short months ago. Now, the quarter ending March 31st, Spotify says its premium subscribers rose 15% on a year on year basis to 182 million, up from 180 the previous quarter. <laughs> Monthly active users rose 19% year-on-year to 422 million, up from 406 million at the end of last year. For context, in the previous quarter, premium subscribers rose 16% year-on-year, while monthly active users were up 18%. Spotify had previously expected to hit 183 million premium subscribers this quarter, but slightly missed this target as a result of withdrawing from the Russian market. Very well, now you are up to speed with what's been happening in the tech world. I spoke to Ernest Tegut, who is the product manager at the OPPO. Of course, OPPO, which is the Chinese brand, uh, he's the country manager. We're going to be talking to him about, um, you know, the OPPO Reno7 and what it has to offer to you, the Kenyan, and also talk about the smartphone sector.
competition. Talk to us about yourself and tell us what you do. My name is Ernest Aigut and I'm the product manager at OPPO Kenya. Yes, uh, I've been in OPPO for this is the seventh year okay. and uh, all through it's a, it has been a wonderful experience working at OPPO. The smartphone market is really uh, having a cutthroat competition right now. What makes OPPO Reno7 the new unit stand out? As you all know that uh, the mobile industry is very dynamic. It keeps on changing. It keeps on changing with the uh, client needs. It keeps on changing with the uh, customer needs. So that is the reason why we keep on uh, forging ahead to provide wonderful uh, services and technology. Uh, uh, technology in terms of its ha hardware and also software. Great. What is that one thing that the Kenyans should look out for when they're going for the Reno7 unit? Okay, uh, there's a big difference between uh, Reno7 series and Reno6. Uh, we have upgraded a lot of uh, functionalities to bring uh, the clients closer to, to a very massive experience. Uh, when you look at the design, when you look at the color, when you look at uh, the screen resolution, when you look at its individual performance, this device is definitely a game changer uh, from its predecessor. Amazing. Kenyans are buying large Android phone users. What is that unique thing you're looking at the Kenyan market and you're saying we have to always be serving them with new units every year? Okay, there are actually four things. Okay. Yeah. The first one is uh, it comes with a very large uh, ROM. Okay. That is the internal memory, 256 GB. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we have a very powerful CPU, okay. which is Qualcomm Snapdragon 680. Uh, 4G platform. So this one uh, ensures you get smooth experience, not only smooth but power consumption. The power consumption is lower as compared to what we have, uh, what there is in the market. Apart from that, we have so many more. Uh, we have the RAM expansion. With this device, it comes with an 8GB RAM. The RAM is responsible for uh, faster application processing and uh, faster program uh, processing. But now, uh, with this, you can now be able to expand up to 13 GB, yes, using RAM expansion. You have three levels. You can expand, you can add plus two, you can add plus three, you can add plus five. So the total comes to 13 GB, yes. So you can imagine the speed. Uh, apart from that, we have a very stylish design, as you can see. Mm. Sleek. Uh, very sleek, very comfortable at hand. Orange. We have two colors. I think this is a mustard? Yes. Okay. This one, we call it the sunset orange color. Yeah, sunset orange color. And then we have the cosmic black version. So all these are, are very, very, very mm, user-directed uh, design and colors. As you, can, as you can see and also as you can know, is uh, the, client need, the client needs change each and every time. That's why the mobile industry is very uh, dynamic at the end of the day. That is the reason why we want to, one of our core missions is to, uh, to be a trendsetter. Okay. Yes, trendsetter in terms of technology and hardware. That is why we try as much as possible to get customers towards that level. For any, any OPPO device, especially the OPPO Reno7 series, we have a very unique operating system that is called ColorOS. Okay. It comes with ColorOS 12. Okay. So ColorOS is an operating system developed by OPPO, but based on Android. The basis is on Android. So ColorOS helps you to do a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things such as screenshots. You can take screenshots conveniently. Okay. Leave alone the traditional way of pressing your volume down plus yeah. power, but also you can just slide with three fingers. Very convenient. Very convenient. Apart from that, it gets you closer and much more easier for you to get an immersive experience, you can do long screenshots, okay. you have gestures, you can just, uh, when somebody is calling you and maybe you're cleaning your cutlery and your hands are wet, no need to take that time to go and uh, dry your hands. All no you need way. to just do, yes. No way. Yes. Uh -huh. All you just need to do is just swipe up to receive the call. Yes. So this is what, this is the convenience you get to to our clients. For ColorOS, as I had mentioned, we have fully customized it to make it much more easier for you to uh, be able to connect to any other external devices, such as your car Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth system, uh, such as your smartwatch. So whenever and however you need all these services, it is all in one house. Yes, it is all in the OPPO Reno7. Yes. Personal 
personal questions. Huh? Yes. What's your personal favorite in that machine? Personal favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the Renault series is a personal favorite. Why? Okay. Because of uh, the massive storage. Okay. Last but not least, uh -huh. the most important thing yeah. is its microscopic camera. This is what I love so much. Oh boy. Yeah. Because with this function, you can now uh, you can now take pictures of very small details. Mute. Yes, okay. like insects, like uh, flowers. If you want to capture those details, okay. it's really interesting. But uh, that's a story of another day. My preference, my personal preference, is 5G. Yes, my personal pre preference, yes, is 5G because uh, I also want to. Uh, I'm young at heart. Yeah, young at heart, meaning that I also enjoy uh, the new trend. I also enjoy uh, perfect technology, mm -hmm. and that is what basically Renault Civi 7 Series is bringing to us. For the Renault Series, mm -hmm. a very usable phone, okay. very practical, okay. um, very convenient. How mm. much? Okay, for the 7, uh, Renault 7 4G, mm -hmm. it retails at 42999 mm -hmm. For the Renault 7 5G, it's going to retail at 59999 Kenya shillings. Notwithstanding, mm -hmm. two years of warranty. Uh, nice. Two good years of warranty. All right, we've been talking to Ernest Good, who is the country manager for OPPO. Let me now give you some very interesting videos I made for you off the internet. And this is the lowdown. And I spoke to Visa East Europe, Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa MD Otto Williams about the opening of the new innovation center in Nairobi, which is historical and one of its kind. And this was part of our conversation. Uh, Otto Williams, I am the head of product partnerships and solutions for Visa in our Central Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa region. Great, so why are we here today? Well, we're here to formally launch our Sub-Saharan Africa Innovation Studio here in Nairobi. Um, we're very excited about it. This is a milestone event for us and it's the first of its kind in this region. Good stuff. So why this particular region? Because understandably this is the flagship or the, uh, the pilot for the African continent really. But why this particular, why Kenya? Look, I think like you mentioned, um, the first of its kind flagship in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, we've got, this will actually make our 12th innovation center and studio globally. And we've picked this region because it's about time that we started to go deeper in the markets to discover what the consumer's payment experiences are, what seller payment experiences are, and to design propositions that meet those needs and that we can scale and deploy globally as well in markets that may have relevant or similar context. Um, and so what we're going to be doing with the center is uh, bringing our partners, whether it's our bank partners, which we've got a number of them throughout the region, uh, bringing our mobile network operator partners who have got a significant consumer base, um, and also bringing our regulator partners to drive this journey together. And so we want to develop for the buyers, we want to develop for the sellers, we want to develop for consumers throughout this region. And so what we go out and do is we discover those needs. We actually do real market research. We go in and we sit with sellers, we sit with buyers and we discover their experience and we bring that back and we actually use human-centric design thinking to design the journey for sellers and buyers and then we develop using various visa capabilities, whether it's our gateway asset with CyberSource, our fraud and risk management solutions, or our tap to phone uh, innovation. And we bring these solutions to market and in partnerships with our ecosystem uh, stakeholders. Great, so the Kenyan startup ecosystem is quite um, robust, so to speak, because I've covered a whole lot of them. And one of the areas that is being focused on uh, in a large way in, in our country today and one of the sectors that's being really, really, um, that's attracting a lot of investment, attracting a lot of startups, even in last year's numbers by Statista, is fintechs. There's so many fintechs in, in, in Kenya right now. Others are addressing either affordable credit or um, issues to do with the ease of payments and the like. Uh, don't you see them as a threat or as competition? Or and, and the question then would be, how is Visa complementing this to make sure that there is uh, a good working rapport with all these fintechs that are coming up in, in Kenya and, of course, the larger part of Africa and sub-Saharan Africa? Now that's a great point. 
and we actually want to encourage, continue to encourage innovation. We want to continue to encourage, uh, you know, technology leadership. We want to continue to encourage uh, players uh, that are focused on creating solutions that work for consumers and for sellers. And what we're going to be doing with the center, and I think, you know, the reason why this is very timely for us in Sub-Saharan Africa, if you think about the demographic today, you know, a significant demographic or population is very young, they're highly connected, and they've got digital uh, smartphones and devices. They want to step into more improved and, uh, you know, significantly enhanced digital experiences. And so, timing is good. What this is also going to do is bring confidence to the ecosystem. And so from a regulator standpoint, they're looking at it and saying, well, a lot of these fintechs are partnering with Visa and co-creating solutions that have the consumer in mind. They're co-creating solutions that have the seller in mind. And so we've, we're a little more co comfortable and confident in what they are bringing to market. Uh, what from a bank standpoint, what they're looking at is we've partnered with Visa to discover the true needs of that consumer and that seller. And so we feel more comfortable bringing capital investment to these solutions and to deploying the solutions with more confidence in market. And then to venture investors that you know, have a really strong interest in investing in these fintechs and driving uh, inclusion and expansion across Sub-Saharan Africa they are also more confident that you know, these fintechs are partnering or working with Visa mm -hmm. to create solutions that have more product market fit. Okay. And so them putting investment dollars behind these fintechs actually makes even more sense. Mm -hmm. And so I think a center like this really does galvanize confidence mm -hmm. across the sub-region. Mm -hmm. And that is what we hope to do in partnership with all of our ecosystem stakeholders. Amazing. So there's a startup that's watching this right now, and they are particularly getting interested in what uh, Visa is coming to do here. So what should they expect when they come to the center? How long, perhaps, is this an acceleration, uh, uh, accelerating uh, incubation center, so to speak? And, and what, should, what services should they expect when they come up? That's a great question. I think for any startup or any fintech that wants to be engaged here, definitely, um, you know, connect with one of our teams here in market. Um, we want to get you into a collaboration and they will make sure that you know we you're in, they're introduced to the right uh, the, the resources to the right uh, you know uh, partners that can bring them into the center and you know schedule time and work with them to look at their solutions. So that would be what I would encourage any fintech or any startup that wants to partner is work with one of our uh, people in market, and we've got you know great resources in market and let's bring you in let's co-create together and let's build the next uh, innovative solution for our sub-region amazing let's go now to lighter issues um, like any other center or school or anything there is normally the the, 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 the pioneers uh, are there any fintechs that are already showing interest in coming are there any that you've signed up that you're starting with this pilot program well, we do have a pipeline, okay. <laughs> and as you would imagine, the demand is pretty strong. Okay. So yes. Uh, great. Yeah. How many? Well, uh, I, I I can't really speak to numbers right now, okay. and, and not not just be, partly because you know I don't want to disclose it, but also because it's a moving target. Okay. So <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a shifting figure on a, on an ongoing basis. Fair enough. You mentioned earlier on that there are. 12 of such models and this is the 12th and the first of its kind in this side of the world um, I just want you to talk to us about the experience you had with the other 11 and 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 what you'd love replicated here or done differently because again all these markets are heterogeneous in their own ways and and we just want to look at those unique points where that, that makes Kenya different from maybe the the startup or, or the accelerator uh, center or the incubator in Europe or in America or in uh, Silicon Valley and the like what what what, what the similarity and what are the differences and what do you expect to see differently happening in, in in this part of the world and particularly in this center yeah no it's a great question actually I look forward to the center designing solutions that are digital first and we will you you do have to understand is you know I, I talked about the demographics earlier very young yeah, yeah. and digital payments and it's actually digital payments actually is not new in 
many sub-Saharan Africa markets, especially here in Kenya. Sure. You know, people have been making USSD payments, which is digital. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Pesa has been, you know, driving digital payments here in market. Mm -hmm. And so, but how do we take that to the next level? How do we take it from closed loop to open loop, mm -hmm. um, where uh, those consumers can access 70 million merchants globally? Uh, those consumers consumers can move money via Visa Direct and via remittances uh, across borders and receive money across borders as well, uh, remittances. And so how do we design all of those solutions? But what I will also hope to see is others coming into the center mm -hmm. to understand and discover the Africa context mm -hmm. for payments. Because what we've been doing, you know, to, to a good degree, we've been going to, a number, to other centers to discover the payment context, whether it's in Singapore or in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and get and, and, and understand what that, that is. Mm -hmm. um, but we, I hope to see others coming into the center to understand that context, mm -hmm. and you know to glean some thoughts and ideas. That means more partnerships. More partnerships. Ah, great. More investors. Mm -hmm. More collaborations. Mm -hmm more technology innovations. And so that's what it attracts. It does not, so it, it's not just about bringing together our regional stakeholders. It's about bringing together global partners who want to discover, understand more, and be a part of this journey that we are on in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now you are up to speed with what's been happening in the tech world. You also know why you should be purchasing the Oppo Reno7. And of course, I've shown you a bit of interesting videos. Join me next week, same place, same time on KTN News, where I'll be talking all things technology. I'm Brian Jadotieno. See you on the next one and remain techy. Right, uh, very interesting package there on matters to do with technology. Well, let's take you back to some more stories now. And the Ministry of Petroleum has moved to reassure the country that there is sufficient stock of petroleum products despite concerns of possible shortages in some parts of the country. This follows an emergency meeting with oil marketing companies and representatives.